Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started on this topic, I would just like to have a big thank you and a big shout out to all my new subscribers. And I would also like to thank everyone who's been leaving me comments down below. Thank you guys. And I know I don't respond to all of them, but I do try to read and respond to as many of them as I can. So guys, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I also like to thank everyone who actually tuned into my live stream last night. That was just kind of a test stream. And I thought it was only gonna be for 10, 15 minutes and we were on there for close to an hour. So everybody who was there, thank you. I really really appreciate it. All right, everybody, let's get into today's topic. In this video, we're going to be touching on an event that most people talk about but don't really understand when it comes to the Titanic disaster, and that would be how come in the initial stages of the sinking, right after Titanic had struck the iceberg, that it takes so long to initially prep and launch the lifeboats. Most people tend to think this was just negligence on the crew, but I want to dive into this story and figure out why in the initial parts of the sinking it took so long to launch the lifeboats. The story of how long it took the crew to actually launch the Titanic's lifeboats has become pretty well known in the Titanic community. And people who don't even study the Titanic know how long it took the crew to initially launch the first few lifeboats from the ship. But what isn't very widely known is the entire story as to why. The most common belief is that it was just due to the fact that the crew wasn't well trained and that they didn't really know what they were doing and that's why it took them so long to launch the lifeboats. Well, there's more to it than that. It's true they didn't have a drill or anything, but it wasn't that they didn't know what they were doing, it's that the fact that it took a while for them to actually issue the call to start getting the lifeboats ready to go. I pulled some information from the book On a Sea of Glass. This book is, no joke, the Bible on the Titanic disaster. Anything you want to know about the sinking is in this book. And this book has a chart in it of the timeline from how long it took each lifeboat to leave. So what time each lifeboat left is listed in this book. And according to this book, the first lifeboat left at 12.40 a.m. So that is around one hour after the initial iceberg impact. Now, I can already hear all of you writing in the comments section, that's proof, isn't it? That's proof that the crew didn't know what they were doing. I mean, seriously, how could it take one hour to launch a lifeboat when you're on a sinking ship? Well, that's not proof at all. You see, the first thing to realize about a sinking ship is, is this ship sinking? Are we actually in trouble? So you see, during the initial stages of the sinking, it was the crew trying to figure out how badly damaged the ship was and if an evacuation was even necessary. Another area where the crew of the Titanic get a lot of criticism and their inefficiency at evacuating the Titanic's passengers and getting the lifeboats ready was due to the fact that briefly after the Titanic had struck the iceberg, the crew did re-engage the engines and the Titanic did continue on for a very, very short amount of time post-collision. However, they only continued on for 5 to 10 minutes after the initial iceberg impact, so it's highly unlikely that this brief motion forward was a major factor in causing the Titanic to sink any quicker. This topic has caused a lot of debate in the Titanic community as to a lot of people trying to figure out exactly what the crew was thinking when they re-engaged the engines briefly post-collision. And the truth is we don't really know. Some people and documentaries try to blame Bruce Ismay. He was the head of the White Star Line, the company that owned the Titanic, and they try to say that he was pushing the crew to continue on despite the risks. Well, that's not the case at all. And honestly, even if he was, the crew wouldn't do that. Bruce Ismay was essentially on the Titanic as a passenger, even though he was the head of the board and the head of the White Star Line. On the ship, he was a passenger. He had some influence over decisions, but the person in charge of the ship was the captain. And Captain Smith would not have continued forward under Ismay giving him a hard time. His first responsibility was to the passengers and crew, not Ismay. So in conclusion on this topic, the short motion that the Titanic did post-collision was not a major factor in causing the Titanic to sink any quicker. It may have accelerated the water briefly for the few minutes that it was going on ahead, but the crew did figure out that the Titanic was in serious trouble during this short period and they quickly stopped the engines and brought the Titanic to a stop. Now, during this very brief period post-collision, this man you see here, his name is Thomas Andrews, and he is the man who built the Titanic, and he was on board the night she sank. He was running around with the captain and the ship's officers, frantically surveying the damage and trying to figure out exactly how badly damaged the Titanic was and if they were in any serious trouble. You see, what Thomas Andrews and the ship's crew were trying to figure out was exactly how badly damaged the Titanic was post the collision with the iceberg. Because in 1912, you know, shipping was still fairly dangerous. You know, going across the ocean was still a pretty dangerous thing. And it wasn't completely uncommon for there to be an incident and some compartments flood. So just because the ship has a hole in it and it's flooding in some areas doesn't necessarily mean that the ship is going to sink. 
and even if the ship does sink, it's possible that it's going to take a very, very long time to sink as well, not two hours and 40 minutes that we know the Titanic did. So all these things, that all these factors that, the, that Thomas Andrews and the ship's crew and officers are trying to figure out, they're trying to piece all this together before they go out and do a mass evacuation. And one incident occurred a few years prior to Titanic that was probably on a lot of their minds when they were trying to factor out how badly damaged is the Titanic and how much time do we actually have. The incident that I'm referring to involves the ship you see in this picture. This ship is the RMS Republic, and it sunk in 1909 following a collision with another ship called the SS Florida. Now what makes this sinking so unique is the amount of time it took the Republic to sink, over 12 hours. So this ship had over 742 passengers on board at the time of the sinking, and the only people who died on the Republic were believed to have been killed during the initial impact. They successfully got most passengers and crew off of this ship before she sank. The thing about the Republic is it was the most recent sinking that Thomas Andrews, Captain Smith, or any of the other Titanic's crew could use to reference what was going on in the Titanic the night that they sank. And try to think of it from their perspective. The Republic is, was at the time the biggest ship to be on the seafloor and actually sink. But the Republic sunk so slowly that they had time to get everyone off before she went down. So now they're on the Titanic. Bigger, safer, watertight compartments, you know, much better than the Republic. So they're probably thinking, even if the Titanic is critically damaged, we have time to get everyone off. During the initial stages of the sinking, they had no way to know the scale of the damage. As I've said before, remember the iceberg damaged from the front of the ship to after the first funnel. This much space of the ship had small gashes in it from the iceberg impact. They had no way to know the scale of the actual damage. And before they go and start waking up the passengers and trying to organize this huge, huge scale evacuation, they need to know with absolute certainty that, yeah, we've got to do this. We have to make sure that the Titanic is sinking before we move forward because passengers who were asleep would not like to be woken up and it just be a false alarm. However, once Thomas Andrews and the ship's crew had officially confirmed that the Titanic was sinking and nothing could have been done to save her, they wasted no time in prepping the lifeboats, waking up the passengers, and doing everything they could to successfully evacuate the Titanic as quickly and safely as possible. When you really try to analyze the history of the Titanic and you try to understand the mindset of the people at the time, the whole delay in launching the lifeboats at the beginning of the sinking actually makes sense. They just wanted to be sure. They didn't want to wake up the passengers and cause a big scene, possibly cause a panic, if it wasn't necessary. They wanted the passengers to have a safe crossing and waking them all up in the middle of the night and throwing them out on deck and telling them to get into a lifeboat or a rowboat in the middle of the freezing Atlantic was not something they wanted to do unless it was absolutely necessary, which I totally understand. But in retrospect, you know, even today, if there's even a slight possibility of danger, we know to assume the worst and start and start uh, planning an evacuation. The only thing I'm saying is I understand at the time why they, why they decided to wait a little bit. But once the lifeboats and the evacuation had begun, it actually proceeded fairly smoothly. Again, I'm pulling info from On a Sea of Glass. Guys, I'm serious, I cannot recommend this book enough. I'll post a link to it down below if you're interested. But once they actually started lowering the lifeboats, the lifeboat launches went very smoothly. The first boat launched at 1240, another boat launched at 1245, another one at 1255, another one at one. So the lifeboat launch went very smoothly, um, more or less. I mean, there were incidents, of course, but they were very efficient in launching the lifeboats as quickly as possible once the evacuation had begun. Uh, my opinion is they probably just could have done a little bit of a better job initially launching the boats. But given all the circumstances, I understand why there was a delay. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you learned something and found it entertaining and enjoyed it as well. So everybody out there, please, as always, hit that subscribe button, and please give my video a like. I really appreciate it. And once again, to all my new subscribers and everybody leaving me comments, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay guys, y'all stay safe out there, and have a good one.